do you know how to solve the complex analysis problems very easily? Do you know that each of the problems that you face in complex analysis has got a hint to the answer? Do you know by very step-by-step -step approach and some tips and tricks, you can solve big equations of complex analysis easily? In this video, I would be showing certain illustrations and examples of complex analysis, especially the algebraic part, and I would like to demonstrate that how through watching those problems closely, you can find the solutions. How you can just by looking at the problem, get an idea that how to attack and how to solve this problem. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel, Physics for Students. Welcome to Lesson 4 of Complex Analysis. Before I begin, I would like to tell you, I am showing certain algebraic equations. I am not taking the Cauchy and Cauchy inequality and other problems right now because this would be just the beginning in which you will understand how easily and quickly you can solve the problem. So first, let me show you some of the problems and how you can sh show the proofs. Okay, I want to, ver this is a problem, we want to verify square root of minus 2 minus i minus i equals to 1 minus square root of 2i equals to minus of 2i. Now, as soon as you look into the problem, you see that there is some kind of an equality, some kind of a thing which happens between square root of 2i and minus 2i. So, that gives a hint that what we need to do is that we need to multiply the real and imaginary numbers first, that is 1i. Then we will take the approach of multiplying the numbers and group by the imaginary units, minus 1, i to the power 1, I have just written it to make it further simple. So, we reduce the imaginary units using the property and then we get this. Then what we do is that we distribute these numbers. Remember that I am making a process a little bit long so that each and every step is quite clear. So distributive, uh, how we do the distribution through this min square root of 2 then minus i and i. Then I reduce further using the imaginary unit property i square equal to minus 1 and I get to this value. You can just do the steps later if you want. I'm just showing you the basic uh, approach to the problem. From there, I rearrange the terms that is minus, one, minus i and i and then I take off the square root of 2 and minus square root of 2. And finally, what we do is that we get the uh, components of the numbers and add the real and imaginary parts separately. So we get to this and we get to this and we get to this. And then we combine the like terms and finally we get minus 2i. So this is basically the answer. So as you see that whenever you see this kind of a problem, what you need to do is to identify the common thing that you need to do and then take a step by step approach. Part uh, second qu question would be, we need to verify this equals to this. Now, as soon as you see this 8i, what happens is that somehow you can understand that using this 3 and 2 or squaring of 3 or squaring of 2 somehow would give a result to 1 plus 8i or 8i. So, that is I have written that looking at the problem, you can see that somehow you are finding something similar to 3 plus 2 or something like that. So, this is the thing which I told you right at the beginning that look into the problem closely, you will find an answer. Okay, so where do we go? So we just open the bracket. So this is uh, what is done minus 4 plus 2i. And then again, we do the same uh, approach. We reduce the imaginary units using property of i squared equal to minus 1. Then we get this one. Then we add the complex numbers together. Then we get this. Now you see the, we get minus 4 plus 3i. Now we are taking c2 and 2i and plus 6i. I have put a bracket of 2 plus 6 because I want to add the complex numbers separately. And this is the right approach I want to say that in further complex analysis problem etc. We will see that as soon as we approach the real and the imaginary part, it is always better to take the real part separate and add the imaginary part. So we add the real number part and then imaginary. We get to minus 1 plus 8i and the i answer is minus 1 plus 8i. So, this is another second problem. You look at 8 and then you find out somehow by squaring etc. We will find out 8, right? And this is the proof that we have got it. So, we just open the brackets. We reduce the imaginary units and then we add the complex and the imaginary numbers separately and we get this. Okay. 
So now we want to reduce the quantity 5i equals to this. Okay, now first we would multiply the complex number using a distributive property. Why? Because we will first take 2i and 3i, this part, 1 and this, and then we will solve this. So let us solve. So we just put the values like this. Then simplifying, we get into this. We reduce the imaginary units using i square equal to minus 1, right? Then we get this 2 minus i and this. And then you will see that we have just simplified and written in the standard 1 minus 3i. Now this 1 minus 3i, now what I have got, now I am multiplying it with the second value. That is we are approaching from the left, the first two taken, got a value of that, then we are multiplying by 3 minus i. I just substituted the value simply and we got this value which is further reduced and we get minus 10i. So this one is now reduced to this and then we can further you know, reduce to the fraction and the answer is this. So what is the lesson? What we are trying to get from this kind of a, uh, equation is that if we get something like real number plus minus anything which is imaginary and at the denominator we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So either you can approach from the left or from the right. So if you are approaching from the right, we get this one and we get a value V. Then whatever be the value V, let it be there. Then we solve, solve 9i nine, nine, and then we multiply that value with V1 and we get V2. Then we further solve this and we get V3 and then V2, uh, whatever we got from the left hand side, we got uh, right hand side, we multiply with the left hand side and get V4 and then V4 multiplied by 5, we get V6. This can be a right-handed approach, this can be a left-handed approach anyway because it is multiplication. So this is a kind of a prototype in order to approach this problem. Okay, we see another problem. We need to prove real of iz equals to minus imaginary of z and imaginary of iz equals to real of z. Okay, so you see that what we always like to do, do is that we want to write it in a, a known form that it's z equals to a plus ib. So we write it as z equal to x plus i y. So we see z equals to x plus i y, but we need to prove what real part of z equals to x and imaginary part of z equals to y. We know this. So in order to prove this, you see that uh, I am taking i. Why? Because we have to prove something with this i. So what I am doing is that I am multiplying this i with both sides. So we find this one and then we find this one and we know that iz equal to ix plus i, uh, minus y where this uh, x is the imaginary part and the real part is minus y. So we get the real part of iz equals to minus y equals to minus um, imaginary of z and here what you see is that we know already imaginary of z equals to y so I have just multiplied that with minus 1. I mean to say with minus and we got the value that is real part of iz equals to minus imaginary part of z because to get the minus I have put it a minus sign. So we get this and the first proof is done. So what is the takeaway? The takeaway is that whatever be the value try to write it into z equals to a plus ib format. Now because we see that in, in order to get some i over there and we have not got that i on the right hand side that is the minus side what we do is that we multiply the i on both sides. Now we got the imaginary part that is the x and we know the real part as y. We need to find out that the imaginary part should be minus. My imaginary part is not minus so we put a minus on both sides and we get the proof. So this is how we approach the problem. Let us see how we can prove the next one. So next one is pretty simple. We do the same approach. We again multiply i with both sides. We know this is the imaginary and the real part. And we know that real z equals to x, imaginary z equals to y, and imaginary of i z equals to x, and real of uh, z equals to x. So it is therefore very simple. Imaginary of i z because equals to x, obviously would be equal to real, real of z that is this part and we get the answer as this. This is a pretty straightforward approach. Okay, now we will see that we need to prove a kind of a set of numbers 2 plus 3i etc and find it as associative. So immediately in order to prove it associative what we will do is that we will take some values. We will take z1, z2 and z3 like this. Now the question is that why we are taking z1 and z2, z3 because we need to prove that multiplying this, this, this within bracket etc leads to the same result. So until we take the values, how can we prove that it is associative? We reduce this using z1, z2 and z3 and 
this is one z1 z2 and i put z3 outside the braces we get this so we just uh, substitute the values further we get this and we get this then we go forward and we get minus 29 plus 59 okay now we are taking the next part that is okay uh, let me go back to the earlier one so we have put this uh, z1 z2 and z3 out of the braces here we are putting z1 with the outside and z2 and z3 so similarly we are just substituting the values you can take a pause of the screen and if you want you can uh, look into the calculations i think i am right so again we get minus 29 plus 59 so now we get z1 z2 z3 equals to z1 z2 z3 which proves that this is associative so what is the takeaway the takeaway is that whenever we need to prove something associative and we got three values we just reduce those we hold the values at z1 z2 z3 it can be a1 a2 a3 and so on from this we automatically get to the very basic thing that we need to verify the associative law for multiplication that means this one equals to this one so we do the same we do z1 equals to a plus ib z2 equals to i have taken the variable c plus id and e equals to if you need to be careful on the values so abc would be the ace are different i remains constant and i have put the imaginary part as bd and f so what we do is that we again took these values and i have just simplified it so i i think i don't need to explain it further so we go again to this into this and then we get this one we fall for the z part and it comes to z1 equals to z z2 z to z1 uh, z2 and z3 you can just follow this i have made a little bit of shortcut just to save time so all of them are a member of the complex sample so this is the thing okay now the final thing is that we need to evaluate 2 plus i divided by 2 minus i so the basic thing is that because we have got a plus and minus different signs on the numerator and the denominator my trick would be to uh, multiply the denominator num numerator taking a conjugate that is 2 minus i why because the values will be reduced to the same so at the below it is 2 minus i so i multiply it into 2 plus i and this one so we get this and we get this and we further get this and this and this i'm not just uh, you know explaining this too much so what we uh, uh, do is that we are multiplying the conjugate of uh, 2 minus i that is 2 plus i on this upstairs then downstairs this 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 and we get the answer as 3 plus 4 right divided by 5 now the, wh wh what is the takeaway the takeaway is that whenever you see numerator and denominator with different signs you need to find out best is that we multiply that by taking a conjugate of the negative number so that it is easier for us to uh, look into the positive that's all for today's video i would like to thank you very much for watching this video if you really do like this video then subscribe to my channel physics for students click on the bell icon to get all the notification for physics for students i do reply to my email and and this is my email id which you can write for any further discussion or confusion regarding mathematics on science i will try the best to uh, help you out this is my exclusive channel on general relativity at youtube you can further follow me at uh, my uh, youtube uh, as well as in linkedin uh, my instagram and my facebook uh, page thank you for watching this video and do let me know with the comment section how do you like with the videos because i have plans further to go ahead with complex analysis teaching you right from the beginning so that that complex analysis is no more complex. Thank you very much.